Okay, we are going to do an activity today um, that's going to start looking at some of the traits that we have. And these are called high um, frequency traits. So you have been given um, a handout that looks like this. And it says discovering your traits activity. And you're going to be looking at, looking at that while I kind of go through this presentation here. Um, so high frequency traits. So first of all, what is a trait? So let's discuss um, what a trait actually is. Give an example of a physical trait that you can actually see. And look around the room. Do you have any traits similar to those around you? Why or why not? Okay. So high frequency traits. So you may have similar traits to many of your classmates, even though you're not related to them. We may have some classes where we do have some relations, but for most of our classes, you're not going to be related to anyone in here. Um, some examples of what I mean by high frequency traits are the ability or not to roll your tongue, your earlobes, if they're attached or unattached, if you have dimples or freckles, if your hair is naturally curly or straight, if you have a hitchhiker's or a straight thumb, if your hairline is a widow's peak or straight, if your, your chin is a cleft chin or a smooth chin, if you um, are colorblind or have normal vision, just those are some um, examples of what I would call high frequency traits. Let's see if I can move my video down here, okay. All right, so we went through those. Um, so what we're going to be doing on your sheet of paper here, on the back is we are going to be going through these traits. Okay, so this is the handout. And we're going to be going through these traits and determining which of these traits you actually have. And then at the end, we're going to go back and I'm going to tell you if you have the dominant or the recessive form. So one question that we're kind of asking in this activity is, are dominant or recessive traits more common in the population? So we can kind of discuss what our prediction might be based on our limited knowledge of dominant versus recessive traits. And then we're going to see, according to these high frequency traits, which ones are more common. So don't go ahead of me. Um, and sometimes we need help determining which traits we have. So we'll kind of be helping around the classroom um, as we go through. So for example, so for this first one, tongue roller versus non-tongue roller, don't ever write just yes or no, because that's going to get confusing. Write the trait. So it's you're actually going to be um, tongue roller or non-tongue roller. Don't say yes or no there, okay? So for our first one, um, you're going to determine if you have the ability to roll your tongue like this picture. And it's so funny with this activity because sometimes students get frustrated if they can't do something, but there's nothing you can do about it. You completely inherited these, thi these things. Like me, I cannot roll my tongue. I just, I can't do it. Some of my kids can, um, but I cannot do it. So you're just going to stick out your tongue and see if you're able to roll it. Once you've done that, you'll go over to this sheet and you're going to say tongue roller or non-tongue roller. Don't put anything for recessive or dominant just yet. Okay, so that's the first one that we are going to, to look at. All right, the next one that I want you um, to see is your earlobes. Are they attached or unattached? So what we're looking at here um, is you are looking at the point at which your lobe right here attaches to your face. So you can see here, there's no real free hanging lobes. It's just kind of straight attached to the face versus this picture. Um, there's some space here that, um, that shows the, um, the earlobe has some, has some space. So I want you to, um, to look at your earlobes or have someone help you look, or I can help you look and you're gonna determine if your earlobes are attached or unattached. Now, if you see mine, 
So mine are um, unattached, but I don't have very big earlobes. So you can have like different varying degrees of the size of your earlobes. Um, so you're looking at just how they are sort of attached to your face. And then you're going to go over here and you're going to say attached or unattached. All right, the next one is dimples or no cheek dimples. So we are truly looking at in your cheeks when you smile. So everyone's got a smile and you're looking at your cheeks um, nowhere else. And it needs to be a true dimple in at least one cheek. So some people have one cheek, some people have both. So we're gonna determine we're not talking about the smile lines here because everybody has those, but we're talking about the dimple. So you need to determine if you have cheek dimples or no, and then here you will write dimples or no dimples. For the next one, I don't have um, a picture of it because it's either if you're right-handed or left-handed, and there's argument as if this is a particular inherited trait. And um, so we're just gonna go and say that it you know, possibly is. And as far as determining which one, um, you would be, just go with whatever hand you would normally write with. So some people at this point would say, well, I can do this with my right hand and this with my left hand. Just go with what you normally write with and you're gonna put right-handed or left-handed. All right, the next one is widow's peak versus straight hairline. So for this one, you may actually, for those of you that have bangs here, you may actually have to pull it back so that we can see your hairline. So you can see my hairline here. And so you're looking to see, is there a peak at the center. Um, now, some people have a really strong widow's peak. Some people may have a light widow's peak. If you have any kind of peak like this picture, you're going to say widow's peak. If you don't, it's a straight hairline. So I have a straight hairline, okay? So um, even though my hairline kind of goes up like this, it doesn't peak at the center anywhere. So this would be considered a straight hairline. So you'll go back to your picture here and you will say widow's peak or straight hairline. Now for the next one, hand clasping. So what I tell students to do is just take your hands like this without thinking, okay, you're just going to take your hands and you're going to clasp them together. Okay. Just, just like this, not like this, but just clasp. Just don't think about it. Now look down, which thumb is on top. If your left thumb is on top, then you're going to write left thumb on top. If your right thumb is on top, you're going to write right thumb on top. Okay, and what's really weird is once you write that down, try to do it the other way and it just does not feel normal. So it's just something that you naturally do. So you're gonna clasp your hands and you're gonna look at your thumbs and see which thumb is on top and you are going to write that um, left thumb on top or right thumb on top. All right, so our next one is going to be your bent little finger versus straight. So for this one, um, we're looking at your, finger, your, your pinkies. And so literally you need to take your hands and kind of put them together like this and just drop them and just look at your fingers. Just look at your pinky fingers like this. And you're gonna be looking specifically at the very tips of them, okay? They're either gonna be fairly straight like this or they're going to kind of flare out. Now, some people's flare out a lot. Some people have a slight flare. Um, but you're going to kind of have to determine, are yours bent like this or are they straight? And you will put that information here, bent or straight little finger. Now for the next one, you actually have to take off your shoes unless you know for, for a fact to take off your socks and look at your toes. Um, so everyone can take off their right shoe and take off their right sock and kind of stand um, straight up and you're looking at the second toe right here, okay? The second toe is either going to be longer than your big toe, or it's going to be equal to or shorter than your big toe. So it's either longer or it's equal to and shorter. So this would this scenario would be not longer at all. And this scenario would be longer. So on your thing here, you're going to write longer, or not longer. All right, Vulcan fingers. So the next one's fun. So you're just gonna take your hands and you're simply just gonna go like this, okay? If this is difficult for you for both hands, like if you're having to sort of like spread your fingers apart and manipulate it, you're not Vulcan fingers, okay? Um, you have to be able just to take your fingers and just go like this very easily, Vulcan fingers. So you either can do this or you can't, and you need to be able to do it with both hands without any effort. So Vulcan versus non-Vulcan. 
Cleft versus smooth chin. So you're looking at your chin right here. You might have like a little dimple, which is called a cleft here. That would be a cleft chin or it's smooth. And you might have to sort of manipulate it to see if that dimple shows up. Um, when you're smiling, you could try that. So cleft or smooth chin, and you would write it right here. All right, <clears throat> naturally curly versus straight hair. So I want you to imagine that you've just gotten out of the shower and you just um, air dry your hair and do nothing to it. No blow drying, no products. Um, and if it's straight, then you're going to say straight. If it has any kind of wave or curl to it, um, then you're going to just say curly because again, you can have wavy versus curly and we're not going to kind of go in a debate of, you know, is this short or is this curly? It's either, I mean, straight or is this curly? It's either completely straight or it's curly and you kind of are going to have to determine that. Um, we're going to skip the PTC taster till the end. Hitchhiker's thumb versus straight. So for this one, you're going to take your thumb and you're going to move back. So mine is a straight thumb. A lot of people's thumb will go back some, but even mine, that is not hitchhikers. A true hitchhiker's thumb, as you can see in this picture, is almost a 90 degree bent backwards. Okay, almost 90 degrees. So if I were to take like a sheet of paper, it would be bending back, you know, almost touching that line if I were to kind of put it against a graph. So that would be a true hitchhiker's thumb. And again, there can be a variance of hitchhiker's thumb. So if your thumb, you know, bends back, you know, at all, then you can say hitchhiker's thumb. It's just, you know, you make that decision. The final one is, is fun. This is PTC paper. So um, everyone's going to get a paper. And if we have time, I'm just going to bring one student up at a time because it's really fun to see their face. And I'll do this in such a way where I'm not touching, you know, the paper and you'll be the only one touching it. But PTC is a chemical. It's not a drug. I'm not giving you drugs. It's a chemical that, um, that you're able to taste genetically or you possibly can't taste it. And so um, this paper that I'm giving you has PTC on it. Interestingly, this chemical is in some, a variety of vegetables. So if you have a really strong aversion to like Brussels sprouts, it may be because you're a taster. And there are different levels of tasters. There's like super tasters, there's slight tasters. We're going to say, if you can taste this at all, we're gonna call you a taster. You will know if you're a taster. It does not taste good, it's kind of bitter. If you're not a taster, it's just going to be like a bland piece of paper in your mouth. So you'll get this, this little sheet of paper. It's like a thin piece of um, tissue paper almost. It has the PTC on it. You're going to put it on your tongue and wait a couple seconds. Oh my God, that is so gross. Um, God, that is nasty. I am a taster. And um, leave it on for a couple seconds, take it and just throw it in the trash. Okay, whoo, and sometimes it lingers, but your saliva will kind of dilute it out. So taster or non-taster there, okay? Um, and the reason why you might be a taster or a non-taster actually has everything to do with the um, number and arrangement of your taste buds on your tongue. So a non-taster has less taste buds and they're arranged further apart than a taster has more taste buds and they're arranged closer together. So it's kind of interesting. The anatomy of your tongue kind of it will determine if you can taste this chemical. So um, those are the what's called high frequency traits. Now what I'm going to do is go through and take you through um, and tell you um, which ones are dominant versus, versus recessive. So on your handout here, um, in this column, you're going to put a D or an R for the trait that you have. Okay, a D or an R. You don't have to rewrite it every single time. So which traits are dominant and which are recessive? And do you think there's more dominant or recessive traits in a population and why? So let's discuss this for a moment before I move on. And tongue roller. <laughs> if you could roll your tongue, this is the dominant trait. OK, if you could not, that's recessive. So I'm going to give you the dominant trait for this. And then the other one, you're going to automatically just know that that's recessive. Unattached lobes is dominant. Dimples are dominant. Right handed, dominant. Widow's peak, dominant. Left thumb, um, left thumb on top is dominant. Bent pinkies, dominant. Toe longer, dominant. Vulcan 
fingers dominant. Cleft chin dominant. Curly hair dominant. PTC taster dominant. Hitchhiker's thumb dominant. So now what you're going to do is you're going to count up how many dominant versus recessive traits. And um, I want you just to do like a little chart just right there at the bottom um, of your list and just write the number of traits that you have that follow the dominant trait and the number that you have that follow the recessive. And now what we're going to do is kind of go through and collect some data from the class. So I'm gonna end this video and the live Mrs. Barnett's gonna take over and um, start to collect some of the data that we've gone through with this class. I am going to be posting some homework, but you are going to um, have a high frequency traits homework where you're essentially going to do what we just did with at least one blood relative. Um, so someone that you're actually related to by blood to see if they have the same or different traits than you. And if you do more than one, that's great, but you have to do at least one. So follow the directions for that activity. Um, and what we're going to do um, here in a moment, once we kind of go through and we um, determine, you know, some of our class data, we are going to be doing an activity where you are going to have a leaf that goes on a tree. And the tree is, um, I think I'm going to be putting it on the whiteboard. And we're going to see what branch your leaf would fall under. And you're going to see if you are on a common branch or a less common branch as far as the number of leaves on the tree.